In late 2023, the search for a missing man led to the unearthing of a strange narrative involving the improper burial of hundreds of people in a potter's field behind the Hines County Penal Farm in Mississippi. Not only did it turn out that the missing man's whereabouts had been known to the Jackson Police Department all along, with his identification having been found on his body, but one of their own officers had actually killed the man after running him over on a highway. While this initial finding would be enough in its own right to raise alarm bells about a potential conspiracy and cover-up, it would soon turn out that a number of missing people and murder victims whose identities were known to the police had also been buried in the same graveyard without any information or details being relayed to their families who were still desperately searching for them. This raised questions among internet sleuths as to whether something even darker than a simple cover-up conspiracy was at play, with many beginning to wonder if somebody within the police force or the correctional facility may have had a motive to conceal these bodies. This led some to speculate that a serial killer or killers was operating within one of these institutions, using their position of power to conceal their crimes. Today we're going to dive headfirst into the strange cases surrounding the Hines County graveyard and see if there's any truth to the conspiracies and speculations. The Potter's Field Conspiracy Is there a serial killer or cover-up in the Jackson Police Department? Part 1. Secrets and Shadows On March 5, 2023 at around 7.30 p.m., father of two Dexter Wade walked out of the door of his mother's home in Jackson, Mississippi, before vanishing without a trace. After nine days of failing to contact him, Dexter's mother, Betterston, filed a missing persons report with the Jackson Police Department. Initially, Dexter's mother had been reluctant to involve the police due to a major lack of trust in them, stemming from the death of her 62-year-old brother in 2019 who had been killed after being slammed into the ground by a Jackson police officer during an arrest. The officer was ultimately convicted of manslaughter, but he was in the process of appealing the case with a lot of support for him from various local judges and branches of the Jackson PD. As a result of his death, Betterston's family was in the midst of a wrongful death lawsuit, accusing the Jackson Police Department of excessive force and an attempted cover-up of their actions which the police and the city staunchly denied. Despite all of this, and despite even being told by her own mother not to involve the untrustworthy police, Betterston felt she had no choice but to call them. After meeting with an investigator, she sent over multiple pictures for them to use and began calling regularly for updates though she was always told that they had none to give her. She desperately tried to get the Jackson Police Department to share the pictures of her son with local media to see if anyone had seen or heard from her son, but they never did. But Betterston was not willing to sit silently and wait. She began her own investigation, exploring abandoned buildings in search of her son and questioning anyone she could in the local area for information. After months of calling police and receiving no new updates, she was informed that her lead investigator was retiring and would soon be replaced. Within two weeks of a new detective taking over Dexter's case, she received a call delivering some harrowing yet baffling news. Her son had died back on March 5th. It turned out that Dexter had died less than an hour after he had walked out of his mother's front door, after being run over by an off-duty Jackson police officer as he attempted to cross a highway. It took a further two months for Betterston to locate the body of her son, which it eventually turned out had been buried in a potter's field behind the Hines County Penal Farm a graveyard for John and Jane Doe's which supposedly consisted of predominantly unclaimed homeless people and prisoners. Dexter, it turned out, had been put in the ground with no funeral, no headstone, no embalming, no coffin, and with none of his loved ones ever being informed. Devastated and confused when Betterston tried to find out why she had never been notified of her son's death, let alone his burial, the Jackson police informed her that they had been unable to identify Dexter, leading them to label him as a John Doe. They claimed the only information they had discovered on his body was a bottle of prescription medication. Calling the medical provider, they were then given a number for Dexter's family that didn't work, leaving them unable to locate any family members. Consequently, they claim his body sat in a morgue for months before being discharged for burial as a John Doe. Except that isn't actually true. In reality, the doctor had given them an address for Dexter and told them that Betterston, someone who was very well known to them, was his next of kin. Even more shockingly, on March 9th, mere days after his death, the Jackson Police Department had actually received details about Dexter's identity from the coroner's office, who had been able to identify him via his fingerprints. Even if this hadn't been the case, the fact that they had his name from the prescription medicine and could have easily used this to formally identify him and consequently contact his family makes it very difficult not to see red flags all over this situation. According to the police, the situation was a result of a lack of communication between their missing persons division, the Accident Investigation Department, and the coroner's office. This all seems highly strange. At best, it's an alarming case of police incompetency. But at worst, 
It's a case of a police force covering up something terrible one of their officers had done. According to the police, they investigated their officer and found Dexter's death to have been an accident. The officer was not deemed to be intoxicated and was never tested for drugs or alcohol. Yet, given it had now been over half a year since the supposed accident, any independent investigation or understanding of the situation was now next to impossible to ascertain. Betterston couldn't help but wonder, given the police had known about her son's identity and death the entire time they had been palming her off with no new information, whether what had had happened was an act of revenge from the department for the conviction of their officer for killing her brother and the consequent lawsuit her family had filed against them. The situation would be disturbing enough in its own right, but with a clear motive for the police to mistreat the family it's hard not to lean towards conspiracy. To add insult to injury, when Betterston was finally able to arrange to have her son's body exhumed from the unmarked grave in the field, she arrived to find that the state had already exhumed him without her permission. After an independent autopsy was finally carried out on Dexter's body, it was discovered that he had numerous identifying items on him, including his wallet with his ID card, including his address, his credit card, and even his health insurance card. This left no doubt in Betterston or her lawyer's minds that there had been an active decision made by the Jackson police to conceal Dexter's manner of death and not to alert his mother. The fact that Dexter had a state identification card and several other identifying items shows us that there was a concerted effort to keep the truth and manner of his death from his family, her lawyer said in a statement. There is no excuse, not even incompetence, for not notifying a next of kin of an identified man's death. The autopsy also revealed that Dexter's body had not been embalmed, resulting in an advanced state of decomposition when he was exhumed, that his left leg had been severed, and that he had multiple blunt force injuries to the skull, ribs, and pelvis. Dexter finally received a formal burial in November of 2023, with all of his family members present. Numerous sources called for the Department of Justice to get involved in the situations and hold a federal investigation to discover the truth surrounding the circumstances of Dexter's death improper burial, and the police misconduct that engulfed it all. The big question lingering over the case like a dark cloud was simply why? Why had any of this happened or been allowed to happen? While the police department continued to be extremely cagey and unhelpful in providing answers regarding what really happened to Dexter and why he was buried in a potter's field, the discovery was about to open the floodgates regarding numerous other bodies in the same field that were buried under equally questionable circumstances. Part 2. Look into the abyss, and the abyss looks back. That very same October of 2023, Marquita Moore, having been searching for her missing brother Mario since early February, was shocked to find his name on a list of homicides in Jackson revealed online by a journalist. As it turned out, Mario had been murdered on February 2nd by being bludgeoned to death, before being left wrapped in a tarp on the street. Much like Dexter, various forms of identification were found on Mario's body, and his identity was confirmed by his fingerprints. Yet once again, Nobody made any attempt to inform his next of kin of his death. And once again, his body was buried unceremoniously in that haunting field. In fact, Mario was buried on the exact same day as Dexter in the field. With the second case of a known person being buried improperly in the Potter's graveyard, reporters began to take notice of what was going on, and in particular NBC began an investigation into the Hines County Penal Farm graveyard. Uncovering a list of names of those buried in the field, which it's worth saying is just insane that it even exists. Given these are supposed to be John Doe's for the most parts, NBC immediately identified another missing man, Jonathan David Hankins, as being among the bodies. Days after Jonathan had gone missing, his body was located on May 23, 2022 in a room in Motel 6 on Interstate 55. While no specific cause of death appears to have been identified, the coroner's office has claimed it forwarded information about his identity to the Jackson police who by contrast have denied ever having identified the man. With three identified bodies now found to have been buried in the field with no attempt to contact their loved ones who all had open missing persons cases with the exact same department that had found, identified and buried them, NBC then went on to publish the list of names they had uncovered in an attempt to see if any more families were still looking for loved ones on the list. Ultimately, several more families discovered the fate of their loved ones due to this list all of whom had been improperly buried in the potter's field with no attempt to notify them. These included James Moran, who was killed on the Interstate 55 highway after being struck by multiple cars, Mark Nelson Bushnell, who was struck by a truck, Michael Akeem Williams, who died in hospital after having a stroke, and David Shane Kelly, who died of an overdose. As with the first three cases covered here, all of the families of these individuals frequently contacted the Jackson Police Department 
who claim to have no updates or knowledge regarding their loved ones, despite in reality having found, identified, and buried them. In total, 215 people were found to have been buried in graves marked only with a number in the Hines County Penal Farm. This has led to numerous headlines and posts declaring that all 215 of them were known and improperly buried. While this fact cannot be specifically proven wrong, there currently just isn't enough information out there to make a statement like this. As of April 2024, the Department of Justice has claimed to be providing assistance in overhauling the system in Jackson to address this issue. Though it has been discovered to be widespread among all of the states in the USA, the Jackson Police Department appear to have accepted no responsibility, claiming it was entirely down to the coroner's department to contact families. Predictably, the coroner's department has put the blame entirely on the Jackson Police Department's doorstep. While the Jackson Police Department have initiated a new policy to try and ensure efforts are made to contact the next of kin in similar cases in the future, which it's baffling didn't already exist, very little coverage or proper investigation from the establishment appears to have taken place. Undeniably, it is a huge injustice and sickening that these identified individuals would be buried with no effort to properly investigate their deaths or contact their loved ones who had active missing person cases on them with the very same department. Nobody would ever dream that their deceased loved one would be buried in an unmarked grave when it would take little to no effort to let them know they had been found and allow them to have the answers they so desperately needed. Of those currently revealed, Dexter Wade's case appears to be the most suspicious. Having been killed by a police officer, it's hard not to see his burial as a deliberate cover-up by the officer's own force, the reasons of which would be purely speculative right now. At the very least, this situation feels like it should have received a full, independent investigation. Given Dexter's family was in the process of suing the police department, and a Jackson police officer was appealing a manslaughter case against Dexter's uncle when he was killed, it seems unfathomable that after identifying him, they would treat his death and his body in such a disturbing manner. Despite reading multiple news stories about the changes the Jackson Police Department are supposedly enacting, I've struggled to find any real apologies for the horrific things they've done, let alone anyone holding their hand up and taking responsibility. In fact, the changes announced appear to be nothing more than stating that the police department is going to do something it should have already been doing in the first place. In that sense, this does feel like a conspiracy. At least so much as those responsible are trying to cover their own asses rather than get to the truth of the misconduct and abuse of power that was unquestionably occurring. The fact that identified bodies could be buried with little effort to investigate their deaths, even when they had been murdered, and no effort to tell anyone, feels like a situation that would have been rife for abuse by anyone in the know. Had there been a police officer who had wanted to conceal something, or a serial killer operating within the Jackson Police Department, the coroner's office, or the correctional facility, it would have been extremely easy to cover their tracks. That said, despite claims made on social media, there is no actual evidence to imply that this was the case. While I accept that a serial killer could have been abusing this whole situation, as far as I can currently tell, there have not been any bodies discovered killed in unreported circumstances, or that the police did not purposefully bury. And there does not appear to be any common links between the manner and causes of death of those buried. In a twisted turn, the department has been charging the families hundreds of dollars to exhume their loved ones, who were all buried with no coffins, as if they weren't already suffering enough from this misconduct. Many of the bodies buried in the field were apparently murder victims from recent cases spanning 2022 to 2023, which understandably has encouraged conspiracy theories. Until more information is known, however, all that can truly be said is that this is an appalling and shocking case of a police department treating people predominantly from poor backgrounds, like they're worthless and showing no care or compassion for victims or their families. There's nothing worse than being left in limbo, questioning what happened to a missing loved one. So the fact that the police knew exactly where these people were yet for some reason failed to inform families for years is just beyond comprehension. From my perspective, this is the true tragedy here, not any wide-spanning conspiracy theories about serial killers as I've seen frequently linked to this situation. The fact that this incompetent police force are allowed to bury identified individuals in this manner, without even attempting to inform their families is truly shocking and unacceptable. So what do you think about all of this? While I realize I'm not buying into the wider conspiracies about police serial killers hiding bodies at will, I find the Dexter Wade scenario difficult to see as anything other than a cover-up, given all of the circumstances surrounding it. I realize this isn't the usual sort of true crime topic I cover on the channel, but I found the whole situation so unbelievable and disturbing that I couldn't help but explore it. Let me know your thoughts about this all down in the comments section below. You have been watching The Mystery Abyss.